tonight. Amen? And I know the tribe got something for us this morning because I felt a little bit of it. You got the spirit of the Lord in you. I know when you brought him in here, when you came in here, you brought him with you. So somewhere in your body, there's some dancing in your feet. There's some praise in your hand. And you can offer up the fruits of praise in a few moments of time as we get ready to praise the Lord. Amen, saints? Shall we pray? Father, I thank you for your anointing. Thank you for Jesus, the church, the resurrection. Thank you for all these heavenly benefits. Thank you for your grace in putting us into your body, the body of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now entering the...
different time right now. And daily we're faced with things that we've never been faced with before. Sometimes I sit back and try to figure out things. And I think, stop wasting your time. Don't worry. It's not you to rain. that I know it's him and not me. Thank you, Lord. Shine on the top. Shine on the top. Gonna shine in my. 
Oh, we gotta do better than that. Repeat after me. <laughs> Say, I'm gonna let it. 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 Repeat. I let it shine. 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 I let it shine.
bones and the strings The voices of my children My family and my home You're the source and finish of my heart to worship God and tell him how much you love him because he's a center of a joy in him there is fullness of joy you know joy is what keeps us going in the good times and in the bad times God is so good and he's so faithful Lord we just thank you for your awesome presence this morning we give glory and honor to you thank you for the joy of salvation Thank you for the joy that fills our hearts this morning because of who you are. And we give praise, glory, and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. It's so good to see you in God's house. Amen. What a joy and blessing. It makes such a difference that we know Jesus as Savior and Lord. We also do want to thank those who are joining us on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, it's such a blessing for us to be here. Amen. I want to take this opportunity. If you're here visiting for the very first time, this is your first time at Abundant Life Faith Fellowship, we'd like to acknowledge you. If that's you, just raise your hand. Is there anybody visiting for the first time? Amen. There's somebody back there. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for coming to worship with us. We'll give you uh, one of our books from uh, Elder Steve and some uh, resources that we have. And, and may God bless you. I pray you'll be blessed in this service. Also this morning, we're blessed to have our brother Tom and sister Miriam in the house. Amen. Thank you for coming to worship with us. Amen. God bless you. 
such a blessing. Always a blessing to have uh, people uh, coming to be here with us this morning. Amen. So, so at this point, we do have a special selection this morning. Amen. I'm near ready to be blessed with our beautiful presentation. So we're going to invite Sister Kathy and Jessica to come and just do a presentation. Amen. mountain can't be moved they say these chains will never break but they don't know you like we do there is power in your name we've heard that there is no way through Tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. Oh. Hey. We know that hope is never
said it, it is done. You said it, I believe it. You said it, it is done. You, so I believe you, God. If you say it, it is done, it is. you create and everything you say is true everything you say is true you are trustworthy god you are reliable god you are the price of solid rock i stand god hallelujah hallelujah if you say it god you are dependable god you are reliable god trustworthy god you always keep your word everything you say is true so if you said it, God, I can put my weight on it, God. you would send your son to save a wretch like me. God, we believe for it. When, 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 when the teacher said, we was like, oh no. 
Uh huh. Because we believe on the name that's higher than every name, which is the name of Jesus Christ. It says, Every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow down. Amen. I'm excited about what God is going to do today. Somebody's going to get a breakthrough today. Somebody's going to get a victory today. All we got to do is, is, is claim it. Amen. All we have to do is walk in it. Amen. It's, 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 high, it's hard to come down when you think about all that God has done for you. When you think about all the victories that's been won. I'm thinking about Gideon, right? He only had a few, but God still was able to do some stuff. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. If there's any children, you can be dismissed for Children's Church. Amen. If you can be seated, you, you may. Amen. Listen, we... we in, in, in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It says, I came that they may have life and have that life more abundantly. We got a good pastor coming up. We got a visionary, an apostle, man, an anointed man of God that's going to talk to us about this abundant life. I introduced the some and reintroduced the others, Elder Stephen F. Brown, amen. Amen. Before we get into the uh, word of the Lord, it's hard to get started after that uh, anointed song and, and dance. It, it shook me up. And it reminded me of a scripture in the book of Isaiah. It said in the year that Isaiah died, he said, I also saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up. And his train, his glory, filled all of the temple. And above the throne were seraphims. And with uh, two of their wings, they covered their face and they said, the God that we look on, he's a holy God. And with two of their wings, they covered their feet and they said, the ground that we stand on is holy ground. And with two of their wings, they did fly and they shouted one to another, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty and his glory fill all of the temple." And today I recognize the glory of God filling the temple of God. We're going to take a look into God's word and we're going to hear what God will uh, speak and what God will say. We've been admonished as children of God to become students of uh, the living word of God. Paul told Timothy in Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, study to show thyself a proved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Then in John 5, 39, the writer said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which uh, testify of me. Matthew 4 and 4, but it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the 
mouth of God. Matthew 22 and 29, he says, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Psalms 119, verse 11, David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In the same Psalm 119 and verse 103, David says, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Same Psalm, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Today we're going to be talking about the abundant life. Let's bow our hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus. As we look into your word, we ask that your anointing in your hand be upon us as we uh, share uh, spiritual truths with the children of God. So again, today I want to talk to you about the abundant life that we have in Christ. When we started Abundant Life Faith Fellowship in the family room of our house, the name itself says something about the vision of Abundant Life. In fact, most churches, I won't say every church, but most churches, the name identifies something about the vision of that local church. In our case, Abundant Life, I envision believers that were filled with the abundant life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the life, faith, fellowship. I believe that faith would be a major part of what God would do in our midst. Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God, and he is a rewarder of those that diligently uh, seek him. So we need faith, abundant life, faith, fellowship. I believe that our church should be a place where we have fellowship uh, one uh, with another and really understand the meaning of that fellowship and how we fit together as a body. In Hebrews 10, 25, the writer said, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together is the matter of some have. And many times we look at this assembling together as gathering together as a group, but if we took a deeper spiritual look at it, forsake not the assembly of yourself together, I believe has something to do with the place that we fit in the body of Christ, assembly order. Example, if I had a model airplane, the pieces come gathered in the box and then you read the instructions and you assemble them together. So forsaking not the assembly of yourself together has something to do, spiritually speaking, with uh, the place that you fit in the body of Christ, assembly order. Praise be to the name of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. So the name has a lot to say about the vision of our local church. The abundant life is choosing God's best for your life. Uh, you must be faithful be determined to grow spiritually, worship God, and be a faithful witness to others about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the vision of abundant life. I believe in the first message that I uh, taught as a preacher was about the vision of abundant life. And I said, stop running, take a stand, be a ready witness because the end time destruction is, is at hand. And in this vision, I had come to a place where, in this vision, I had come to a place where I found myself running from, uh, running from the devil. I was swimming in some water Uh, trying to get away from the devil. And then I realized as I'm swimming in this water, water is a type of God's word. I'm surrounded uh, by God's word and the power of the living God. And I said to myself, well, why am I running from the devil? And then I came up on a cliff of rocks and I began to stand there, realizing who I was in Christ and the enemy began to move away from me. And in the far city or in the far distance, I could see the city of Cincinnati, downtown Cincinnati. And my heart went out to the city 
to get the word of God to them before destruction fell upon that city. So again, in the vision, stop running. Those of you that are here today, God wants you to know who you are as a believer. We, we should not be running from the devil because we've been filled with the power of the living God on the inside. And once we take a stand, the devil knows you know who you are. He will respect that and he will move away from you. It doesn't matter how long you've been born again. You have the power of the living God in you. In Luke 10, 19, the writer says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and, and, and power, more power than all of the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. And this is true to the person that's born again today. You have to believe it. In other words, you have to believe you have the power of the living God on the inside of you. The greater one is on the inside of you. In the first epistle of John 4 and 4, the writer says, But ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. The promises of God belong to the church now. This was a message I preached years ago. The promises of God belong to the church now. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to wait the next week or next month or next year. The promises of God belong to the church now. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, it says, Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Now, I like to pay attention to words in a scripture because many times the writer is indicating or, or trying to convey a, a thought uh, many times by the words that are in that verse of scripture. So, grace and peace be multiplied to you. He could have said, uh, have grace and peace, but grace and peace, peace be multiplied to you. It's, it's a snapshot at the miracle of the multiplication of Jesus Christ in your life concerning uh, grace and peace. I hear the word of the Lord saying, and the peace of God which shall pay us all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So the way grace and peace is multiplied to you by you having a knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. As his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Turn to the person nearest to you and say, our God is more than able. Say, nothing is too tough. Nothing is too hard for the God we serve. And see, you have to keep that in view and you have to believe that. In Ephesians 3 and 20, the writer says, Now unto him, talking about our God, now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask to think, according to the power that worketh in us. What does the Bible say about having the abundant life? Uh, one of the great verses of Scripture is John 10 and 10. The thief cometh but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So if you try to figure out what the devil wants to do to you, here it is right here in black and white. The thief cometh not, say this is the only reason he comes, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. So what is he trying to steal from you and what is he trying to steal from me? He's trying to steal our faith. He's trying to steal our faithfulness in the work of God. He's trying to steal the calling that God has given us. He's trying to steal your place and position in the body of Christ. So he comes to steal, to kill, and to 
uh, destroy. In 1 John 5, well, we're going to look at this in a few different translations. That was the King James translation. The God's Word translation says, A thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came so that my sheep will have life and so that they will have everything they need. Then in the message translation, the same verse reads, a thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. I like that one also. Amen. So we're going to take a look at seven building blocks of the abundant life. In other words, these are uh, uh, seven basic principles to having the abundant life. So in other words, you don't automatically have the abundant life because you are uh, a Christian. You have it available to you, but you have to know what you have. That's just like if you had a car, the gas tank was full, but for some reason the gas needle was malfunctioning and it said E. You, you would think, well, I need gas, but in reality, your tank is full. And this is the way it is in your life and my life in many cases. Our gas tank is filled with the power of God, but the devil makes us look at it in such a way that we think, well, uh, I need some more. Seven building blocks of the abundant life. The first building block is put God first. Turn to the person next to you and say, put God first. Now, this is a thread that runs throughout Scripture, in the Old Testament and New Testament. God wants to be first in your life, and he will bring uh, challenges to you and to me to test the truth of that. Amen. In Matthew 6, it says, But more than anything else, put God's work first and do what he wants. Turn to your neighbor and say, do what he wants. See, not what you want, but what he wants, right? You have to keep this in view. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse number 1, the writer said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. So God is calling for a living sacrifice in the New Testament of you and me. And the difference in a living sacrifice and a dead one a living sacrifice can get up and walk away, but a dead one can't do anything. See, God wants you and me to willingly submit our will to him. Not our will, God, but, but your will be done. Jesus said, no man take my life, but I, I willingly give it away as an example of the willing sacrifice. Following Jesus' example, you got to make a decision. You have to make a choice. I'm going to be a willing sacrifice so when it comes to putting God first you, and doing what God wants he says then the other things in life will be yours as well putting God first involves listening to God's voice in John 10 27 it says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they uh, follow me when Abundant Life was started, I always go back and forth whether it was a dream or a vision, but somehow on the inside, uh, the dream or vision that was filled with symbolism, I believe it was a call to start a church. And uh, uh, later, I learned someone said, well, what food would start a church in this house? <laughs> Tom Daniels. <laughs> I look at it now and I say to myself, yeah, what food would start a church in this house? Right. Well, one, I believe that hears from God. See, sometimes when you hear God's voice, it might be something that, that uh, uh, you don't want to hear. Amen. Praise be to his name. The second building block is you must understand what true riches is. See, the Bible talks about riches, and then it talks about true riches. One, two, what's the difference in riches and true riches? So you must understand 
what true riches is. In Luke 16, 11, it says, and if you are trustworthy about worldly wealth, if you are trustworthy about worldly wealth, uh, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? If you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of, of heaven? So what is the true riches of heaven and, and what is worldly wealth or worldly riches and then the true riches of heaven? Amen, now I'll give you a clue. The riches of heaven can produce worldly riches, riches, but worldly wealth cannot produce spiritual riches that leads to the uh, blessings of God. Now I'm gonna give you an example in my life. When I worked at General Electric, at General Electric, people have different types of uh, jobs. Uh, the lowest level job was what they called a R12. And this was a person that would do physical labor or uh, uh, different uh, jobs that are required more physical labor. It wasn't really a real skill, skill job. And then a person might move up from an R12 or that basic labor to a machine operating job. And that's what I did. I moved up to, I started out as an R12. The same month I graduated from high school, I started working at General Electric as R12. And because I was always good with my hands, I moved up to different machine operating jobs. And then based on the workload of GE, you might get bumped down to a lower grade. And this was a point in my life when I had got bumped down to a R12 and I was working in a development laboratory. And I had just got saved and there's a, a new believer, I was a radical, I mean a really radical, radical, radical Christian. I mean, I took believing God to the ultimate ends. And so, anyway, I'm an R12 working in this laboratory on uh, a first shift. And I had begun to gain favor with the manager that was in the laboratory. I remember one day, I didn't have a lot to do and I started washing the walls in this long hall. It must have been a hall uh, longer than here all the way out to the foyer. And when you begin to wash the walls, you can see how dirty the walls were. And then the manager in the laboratory came by and he said, who told you to wash these walls? I said, well, I wasn't doing much and so I just decided I washed the walls. He said, you want to make some overtime? I said, yeah. He said, well, wa wash the walls on overtime and so that's what I did. And as I'm working in this laboratory, there came a point when they, uh, I had a recall to a second shift machine operator job. And I remember the foreman uh, of the uh, lab came and he told me, he says, you got a recall to a second uh, shift machine operator job. Uh, 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 do you want it? And I said, well, I got to ask God about it. I got to pray about it. He said, you got to do what? I said, I got to ask God about it. I got to pray about it. So I go home and come back the next day and I tell him, I said, God don't want me to take the job. And the reason was, in my heart and mind, I had started a Bible class that I didn't want to miss because if I, I was on second shift, I couldn't go to this Bible class. So I felt I need to be in this Bible class. So I'm making a choice between worldly wealth and the riches of heaven. Uh, probably I was looking at a 20% increase, 10% for a second shift and the range, probably a 20, 25% increase in pay, but all our needs would be met. So I told him, I just, the guy didn't want me to take the job. And lo and behold, a number of months passed. And like I said, I had gained favor with this manager in the laboratory and he came to me and said, uh, I had tried to get into a program for tool and die makers and I couldn't get in it. He said, I got two jobs to offer you, tool and die maker or uh, chemical engineer and lab tech. And I mean, I, I didn't know nothing about uh, uh, chemistry and all like that. And so I asked the guys in the laboratory which one I should take. They said, take this tech job. And so I told the guy I wanted to take the tech job. He said, well, you got to go down to personnel and uh, go through some kind of test or something. I said, I can't, I don't think I could pass no test for no chemical engineer lab tech. He said, go on down, you got the job. And that's how I started out. 
with the job. Now, what I want you to think about is this. If I had a taken the second shift job, I would have missed the abundant blessing of a salary job that was up the road for me because I made a choice to uh, put spiritual riches over worldly riches. See, you never know how uh, the pieces of life will land themselves. And when I left GE, I was the highest level lab tech GE had. God bless me along the way. Riches and true riches. Another example. When uh, we decided to go into ministry full time, um, we might have had about 30 members. I don't remember exactly. And uh, I remember coming home telling Mary, and, you know, what happened was I had went to this Kenneth Copeland meeting. And in this meeting, I felt God had spoke to me. He said, go into ministry full time. I came home, told Mary, and I was all excited. I said, God says, it's time now to go into ministry full time. Mary said, that can't be, God. That, that can't be. That can't be. And so I said, God, you have to talk to your daughter because we, we got to be in agreement. This is going to be tough enough even if we're in agreement. I said, uh, so talk to your daughter. I said, I won't do it until I, anyway, a couple weeks later. So Mary said, okay, God spoke to me, so let's go for it. Now, we made a decision. When I left GE, I was going to, my pay was going to be cut by 50% to work full time for the church. And so Marina and I made that decision together. Two weeks later, she got a job at Procter & Gamble. We had more money than we had when I was just working. Are you following me? So what I'm saying, the abundant life involves listening uh, to God's voice and daring to call those things that be not as though uh, they, are, they are, amen. So the second building block, you must understand what true riches is. And so the challenge of life will come to each of us, and we're going to have to make some choices and some decisions. The third building block is know your spiritual identity, amen. You know, sometimes things happen in life and we get uh, shook up and we get outside of the example of Christ. Or you listen to me. But the greater one on the inside of you, we have to believe God has the ability to keep us in check and display the character of Christ no matter what is going on around us because one of the tricks of the devil is to try to get you egg you into a situation or position that will steal glory from God remember the thief comes to steal to kill and to destroy so he comes to steal your uh, commitment your uh, righteousness that you have in God an example I'm going to give uh, uh, many of you know the church was involved in this civil rights case with one of the tenants in uh, one of our properties that uh, filed a fraudulent civil rights case against us. And they tried to encourage us to settle it, but we were determined to take a stand for what was true and right and make a long story short. It went to court. We must have spent, I don't know how many hours in court, six days, uh, six, day, six hours or seven hours a day. But in the end, we won the case. But during the case, this lady began to rail on me. She said, uh, talking about me, said, he ain't no real preacher. He's a, 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 a Jake leg preacher, a wolf in sheep's clothes. He's a snake. And she was just going on upset to myself. <laughs> I, I had to put Mary in a check because she was, she was ready to go into her boxing heritage. <laughs> oh, boy, can I get this off? <laughs> oh, boy, all I can say, now this happened like a month ago or something like this. All I can say, God was with us. <laughs> God was with us because... You know, hearing someone lie on you, and you sit there and have to listen to it, 
But that really brought back, you know, the peace of God, and God knew what was true. And through it all, I said through it all, God came forth and made things right. And I praise him to this day for it. Amen. 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 I mean, in reality, uh, I, I, I felt she made herself look bad in front of the jury. And in, and in the end, it was a unanimous decision. This one girl was the daughter of one of the lawyers. She said the judge should have had a big mantle and banged it down and said, not guilty. <laughs> But you're going to have some circumstances and situations in life when someone may say something that may not be true about you, 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 or any of us. And we have to maintain the heart of God and let not yourself be moved out of place. The peace of God, which passes of all understanding. In other words, natural men don't understand how you could do it. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. So know your spiritual identity. First Epistle of John 3.10. Here's how you tell the difference between God's children and the devil's children. The one who won't practice righteous ways isn't from God, nor is the one who won't love brothers or sisters. A simple test. The Bible says we are kings and priests unto our God. That's part of our spiritual identity. Book of Revelations 5.10. You made them to be a kingdom of priests for our God, and they will rule on the earth. So God wants you to act like a king's kid. Amen. We have a rich and precious heritage. And don't be afraid to stand up for who you are in Christ. And remember, when you take a stand for God, you're not alone. You have a lot of help. Amen. You have uh, King Kong on the right and Godzilla on the left and Rodan flying out ahead. So you have all of the help uh, that you need. The fourth building block, have a pure heart. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart. Have a pure heart. David was a man after God's own heart. Proverbs 16 and 11. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All of the weights of the bag are his work. Now, this is an interesting verse of scripture. A just weight and balance where did it come from? The Lord. Amen again. A just weight and balance are whose? The Lord's. All of the weights of the bag are his work. Now what is this bag? All of the weights of the bag are his work. What is this bag? All of the weights of the bag are his work. I believe the bag is your heart or the center of the place you make decisions. And now think about it. Each of us come to the crossroads of decisions in life and you begin to weigh them out in your heart. I believe the bag represents your heart and you're going through a balancing act in your heart. Your spirit has a voice, your soul has a voice, and your body has a voice. Your body says, well, it's cold or hot. I like him, I like her. Uh, uh, the Spirit says, follow the pathway of God. And uh, depending on how mature your soul is, he would join with the body or with the Spirit. But that juggling act goes on in each of our heart. All of the weights of the bag are his work. Now, when you come to a righteous decision in life, you didn't make that decision by yourself but God was involved in bringing a righteous and just balance in your heart. Again, the scripture says, a just weight and balance are whose? The Lord's. 
all of the weights of the bag or his work. So when you come to a righteous, fair, and honest decision in life, you've yielded to the working of God in your heart, and you've come out with a, uh, a righteous and a just uh, balance. In Malachi 6 and 11, it says, Shall I acquit the man with wicked scales and with a bag of deceitful weights? See, in your heart, if you allow deceitful weights to balance you in a place that's not righteousness, that's not God's uh, choice uh, for you. In Micah, it says, Shall I acquit the man with wicked scales and with a bag of deceitful weights? And the answer is no. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart more than anything else because the source of all your life flows from it. And when it comes to our heart, the balancing act that takes place in our heart, I believe you have to be the same behind the this, this scenes as you are on Front Street. Uh, some people are like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I mean, behind the scenes, they're raising H-E-L-L. -L. But when they come into the light, they're this smiling, shining example of a Christian. We must be the same behind the scenes as we are uh, when we walk in to the light or with other people. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart more than anything else because the source of your life flows from it. Building block number five when it comes to the abundant life. Show uh, random acts of kindness. This is a building block to the abundant life. Show random acts of kindness. Many times we find ourselves in such circumstances or situations where God is speaking to your heart to extend a random act of, of kindness. And I think we should obey God because there's something powerful about that. Uh, I know uh, during the pandemic, our church reached out to bless people in a variety of different ways. We gave out a number of Kroger gift cards, Walmart gift cards. Uh, envelopes with money in it to people. I mean, like uh, during the pandemic, I think our church put out about close to $5,000 giving gifts to bless people, let them know God loves you. And I think we use that card that says we just want to uh, uh, brighten your day, like Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And I remember being in Dollar General, and it was a lady standing in front of me with um, uh, several kids and uh, I had one of these envelopes we were giving out that I think it had $30 in it, you know, not a lot, but $30. And I think we, we gave out a fair number of them. So anyway, I, I felt God said, bless this lady with one. So we went through the line and I said, miss, uh, God just want to uh, uh, bless you and I want to let you know God loves you. This is a small gift and I gave it to her and she looked at the $30. I mean, you would have thought she'd been knowing me forever. She was... <laughs> We're in Dollar General doing this hugging thing, and they said, God is good, God is good. <laughs> Random acts of kindness. I was in United Dairy. I go in there sometime to get a donut for coffee because they have greater donuts, and I go in there and get one. So anyway, I was in line to get this donut, and I have it in my hand. And this lady that is in front of me says, uh, uh, put this donut on my bill. So that was, she extended a random act of kindness. And uh, I mean, I was really blessed by that, yeah, you know, her extension of kindness to me. And so random acts of kindness or building blocks to living the abundant life is something about blessing others that brings a blessing your way. When the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, in our minds, many times we think, well, I want to be on the receiving end. It's more blessed to get than it is to receive. But the Bible says it's more blessed to give than receive. Two things are happening. When you give, God is teaching you how to be more generous. And when you give, it's an opportunity based on how we do it for God to bring a 30, 60, or 100-fold return to us by what we give. And we have examples in Scripture where 
uh, people gave their very last and God blessed them abundantly. But when you give it looking for nothing in return, I believe there's a blessing of God associated with it. So random acts of kindness, building block number six. Remember what God has done. You must see God at work by uh, faith. Each of us here today can place your foot in the foothold of the mountain of your journey with God. And you have some examples that you know nobody but God could have done this. So remembering what God has done uh, brings a level of stability. If God done it once, he could do it again and again. And so remembering what God has done is a step toward the abundant life. And for some reason, when you look throughout scripture, people had a way of forgetting what God have done, did. What about the children of Israel? God blessed them. You know all of the plagues, freeing them from Egypt and parting the Red Sea, and they go across and on and on. And then during their journey, things get hard. Sometimes our Christian journey gets hard. And they begin to complain say, about eating the same thing every day, and uh, they were complaining about the journey. And then some of them begin to say, you know, in Egypt we had this and that, said so we should go back to Egypt. Now I'll show you how delusional we can get. The journey got hard, and some of them began to say, uh, we should go back to Egypt. They was gonna have to be an awful good swimmer to swim across the Red Sea. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what their plan was. Are you following me? But sometime in life, we get delusional with the statements we make and the way we begin to think. So understand that the journey may get tough along the way, but this is where uh, the tough get going, amen. Remember what uh, God has done. You must see God at work uh, by faith. Example, when I bought the first church pews uh, for our church building, we did not have a church building, but these pews were on a sale for a good price. Charlie Winburn was the person we bought them from. But I bought the pews before I knew where I was going to put the pews. Are you listening to me? I bought the pews and then two weeks later, God opened up the uh, storefront on Marlowe. And that's where those pews ended up going. Some of the brothers remodeled that building and those pews went there. But you have to remember what God has done and you must see God at work by faith, amen. You have to dare to call those things that be not as though they are. Hebrews 11 and one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When is faith faith? Now. Now faith is the substance, the tangible substance of things hoped for. Things hoped for within themselves have no substance, but when you add faith to them, they have substance. Just like lemonade is bitter and tart, but when you add sugar to it, it's, it's sweet. And so now faith is the substance, the tangible characteristics of things hoped for. The things hoped for have no substance within themselves and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the evidence of a certain kind of things, things not seen. Are you listening to me? And so when I bought the pews, I saw a place that they could be, but I didn't see the place yet. Are you following me? So by faith, we call those things that be not as though they are. I'll give you another example. When we were in the East Epworth building, and a lot of times we came in there, it would be really, really cold because it had, I believe, a steam heat system. And one day, uh, I just got stirred up on the inside and made a statement after I said that. I said, well, why did I say that, you know? But anyway, I said, if they don't get this heat going, God's going to find us another place to have church within two weeks or something like that. 
And lo and behold, within two weeks, we moved to the uh, Lincoln Avenue uh, 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 meeting room, and we held church there for a space of time. See, see, sometimes when you see something on the inside, it becomes so real to you. I remember, this is when I was working in a development laboratory as a lab tech. And I met General Electric, and we're having a business meeting about coding parts and something like that. And then out of nowhere, I say, uh, I'm going to be a full-time preacher one day. I'm, this is what I said in this meeting. And they looked at me and said, what? <laughs> and then after I said it, I said, but why did I say that? You know. But it was something that was on the inside that one day I would be a, a full-time preacher. You have to see it on the inside. So show random acts of uh, kindness. The seventh building block and the last one is walk in the authority of the believer. Uh, Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means uh, hurt you. Amen. And I believe earlier I shared John 4 and 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new cre creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And this is another interesting verse of Scripture. When you read through the Scriptures, one thing I would encourage you to do, ask yourself, is this Scripture talking about referring to the spirit, soul, or body of man, or spirit, soul, and body. Amen. That will help you get some insight to the interpretation of Scripture. Now, this one we just read. Therefore, if, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become what? New. Now, what part of man can this scripture be true to? Only your spirit, man. That's the only, only part of the threefold part of man that that verse can be totally true to. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And that's only true relative to your spirit, man. The soul of man is going through a, a saving process. According to James, receive with meekness the engrafted word that is able to save your soul. And we know one day our bodies will be changed because in Corinthians it said, in the moment and twinkling of an eye, your body shall be uh, changed. So in reality, the spirit is complete and perfect from the moment you are uh, born again. And I believe there's a scripture in the first epistle of John say, he that is born of God sinneth not. What part of man can that be true to? Only your spirit, man. Once you're born of God, your spirit, man, will always do the right thing. Uh, your soul and your body still may have to have prayer for sin. Are you with me? So what I'm encouraging you to do to look at every scripture and ask yourself the question does this refer to body, soul, spirit, or body, soul, and spirit? That's just a, a sad journey for a moment. Now, I do want to take a moment to ask you, I, I've been made aware there's a couple people that may have inquired about the new members class. The new members class is a series of teachings that tells you about the church and it's a stepping stone or part of the pathway to becoming a, uh, a member of Abundant Life. Now, I want to take just a moment. We, it's a little booklet I believe we give out along the way called I Am a Church Member. And I want to read the table of contents a little bit. Every uh, believer should be part of a church family somewhere. 
The introduction is a tale of two uh, Christian members. The Bible always talks about uh, a mature believer and then one that they call a carnal Christian or not as mature. I will be a functioning member of uh, the local church. I will be a unifying member of the local church. I will not let my church be about my preference and desires, but we will listen to God. I will pray for my church leaders. I will lead my family to be uh, healthy church members. I will treasure church membership. It is a gift. So uh, what I do want to say, if you're interested in becoming a part of Abundant Life, beginning with the uh, new members class, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Uh, put your name on it and someone will uh, guide you along the way, the steps that you need to take. Closing thought. John 10 and 10, we began with this one. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that you might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Again, God wants you and God wants me to live the abundant life that's available in Christ. But you got to make some choices. You got to make some decisions because our free will is involved. In Psalms 16 and 11, closing scripture, now you've got my feet on the life path, all radiant from the shining of your face. Ever since you took my hand, I'm on the right way. Dare to live the abundant life. Let's give God a hand clap, amen. <laughs> Dare to live the abundant life. I want to say to those uh, within the sound of my voice, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, that's the starting point. That is the very beginning of the abundant life. Amen. And the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved or you shall become a part of the uh, family of God. So if you're out there within the sound of my voice or here in the local assembly, I want you to uh, say these words within your heart. Father God, I want to ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart. I want to become a part of the family of God. I'm turning my back on my prior life and want to uh, do the will of God. And before I close out, I just want to say a collective prayer uh, for each of you that are here today. I'm going to ask everyone if you stand up right where you're sitting just for a moment, and I'm going to pray one collective uh, prayer that God would stir our hearts to walk in the fullness of the abundant life for you, 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 each of us. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, not in our might nor in our power, but we look to you, O oh God, to uh, speak to us how we can move fully and completely into the abundant life that you've made available for every believer, Father. We know that nothing is too tough, nothing is too hard for you, but all things are possible with the God that we serve, and we give your name the thanks the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask Debbie to come. today's service? Oh my goodness. You can't touch the microphone because you already cleaned it. Mary's gift is the mic wiper. <laughs> well, sometimes she's the mic talker too. <laughs> so praise God. Um, Today's service was just a blessing. I just want to give a shout out to Jessica Tucker who sang that song. Shout out 
the song is Believe For It, and shout out to her mama who danced that song. Amen. <laughs> That was such a blessing. We just thank you. Thank you. And I know Todd is back there with being a, a, a just grateful father, looking at his family, praising God. Amen. Shout out to the tribe. Shout out to our media team. Shout out to our pastors. Amen. Amen. So we would like for you to join us for adult and youth Sunday school at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Um, if you can't make it out, we do have services available on Zoom, but we'd love to see you in the house. Amen. Children's church is now open, so come on out and bring your kids. We still practice social distancing, and we're still practicing the mass for the time being. Amen. Wednesday night is spiritual growth and wellness class starts at 7 a.m., Saturday morning prayer starts at 9 a.m. All those weekly services are available on our website, alpha.org. You can click on the link for the service that you want to attend. May 14th, we're having Money Matters for Mothers and Others financial workshop. And I will be your hostess, so come on out and join us. I don't know how I can help you get some money, but we're going to figure it out. Youth conference is coming up. Is it Lust or Love, June 25th? From 10.30 to 2, so mark your calendars, bring our youth out so they can know the difference between lust and love. Amen. As I said last week, some old people might need to come out too. <laughs> Just a reminder not to park in the front circle. We want to reserve that, that spot for those with special needs so that they can get easy access to the building. And as Elder Steve said, we're starting new members classes, so sign-up sheets are in the foyer if you would like to sign up to become a new member. And then we have Stephanie that wants to share about the health fair that we had yesterday. Give a shout out. All right, I'm going to have to hold the microphone for you. Oh, because it's already been wiped? Yeah. And well, you got to have to do some work because I'm going to be moving. So thank you to okay, everybody. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, that's okay. You can stay. I'm just going to take your arm with me. So I have my notes here, but first I want to give honor to Elder Steve and Pastor Boniface um, for the opportunity and a special honor to Jules. And I want to first start off by thanking our partners because the health fair was fantastic. I, honestly, it was beyond like exceeding and abundantly about what I thought. I just want to share, first of all, Bev came to me in January. I had a really big project I was working on for another organization and I could not even like start until almost February. Every, I'm gonna cry, every person we contacted said yes. And if they didn't say yes, they said next year. So that was God, it was all God. When it came together, me and Bev were just thanking God because we knew it was only God. What we did in two months, people do in a year. So I just wanna give thanks to, first of all, our partners, the Center for Closing the Health Gap, NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Health Illness, Cancer Society, ICANN Health, Cincinnati Lynx Black Care Initiative, Felicia Felix from the Cincinnati Health Department did dental care, which was outstanding, blood pressure screening volunteers, the American Heart Association, NKO Yoga, Weight Off Fitness, Metro Cincinnati Dance Association, and the Adolescent Medicine Cincinnati Children's. Those are the volunteer, those are our partners that provided boosts, provided fitness demonstrations, um, and just made it an enjoyable day. Um, I, from the church, I'd like to thank, first of all, Pastor, Pastor Boniface, who um, I think he thinks I might be a little crazy, but I am. So it's good he, he's good he knows it now, because we got a future together. <laughs> Am I crazy? <laughs> Felina for putting up with all my messages, uh, who helped us in the administrative side. Lamont, who is probably done with me on the technology level, because I think I gave him so many last minute things, like, you can do it. You can do it. How can I change it? You can do it. Um, to my brother and his wife, Robin, who manned the front desk and did an excellent job in welcoming people in. Um, to Sister Erlene, who worked in the American Heart Association booth. To Linda, who was our security. Barbara, thank you for being so flexible. She went from the food to, to the front desk to working out. <laughs> And I just want to thank you for being flexible in the house. Thank you so much. To Denise, who was our food distribution, even though I tried to get her to join the workouts. I don't know, see her here today, but I'm going to get her in a workout. I don't know. But yeah, 
I'm going to get you, Denise. I know your hair was pretty yesterday, but um, next time we're going to get you. Um, to Leslie, who helped us um, be able to organize NAMI. I reached out to Leslie and said we need some mental health resources for the people in the house and the people coming in because there's one in five people suffer from mental health. So um, Leslie contacted, contacted me and got with the National Association and got somebody out here, and that was such a blessing. Um, and Sister Carol, who helped us in the front, and to Simeon, who made sure everything stayed clean and organized. Um, a very, very, very special thanks to Sister Phyllis. One of our um, fitness instructors had a, an emergency with her child. She had to go to take him to the hospital. And I went to Phyllis, I was like, Phyllis, in about 15 minutes, we need an instructor to Zuzuma. Can you do it? And she's like, yes. So that's how we work in the house. You know, we gotta be flexible and bendable. And that was a blessing. And everybody enjoyed her class so much. So a very special thanks to Phyllis. And I just want to recognize our Jules leader, Bev. She's going to come up here, even though she said she's not. Um, Bev, uh, she reached out to me. And really, me and I was, Bev was a committee of one. <laughs> and we were a committee of two. But um, I think I, I might have ran Bev and wore her out. So I'm surprised she's able to get up and come today. But I just want to recognize her because her vision and our vision, we had the same vision. And we didn't even know it until we got together. Um, and God brought it together and she, her reaching out, you know, you got two people here who aren't afraid to ask and ask and it shall be given up to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And that's what we got because we ask. So I want to just, I have, we have two giveaways, first of all, because um, Sister Rennell donated a book yesterday to give away and we have two giveaways. So this isn't going to come without a price because Everything has a price in life. You know, we all, our lives are given for a price. So I have a question, two questions. And the first people to answer these questions will get, we have two books. Um, so the first question is, and, I'm, and Bev, help me look at hands so we can see who raised their hand. Okay, the first question. And you know it's a health question, right? Okay. What percentage of your body is water? Back in the back. Oh, and I want to make a disclaimer. If you won something yesterday, Sister Shirley, who won everything, um, you are disqualified. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, you too, who won the, yeah, disqualified. Um, way in the back with the headscarf. Raise your hand first. Denise? Oh, Rebecca. Oh, is that Rebecca? Oh, Rebecca, hey. Okay, I'm gonna give it to Rebecca. She was off by five, seventy-five percent. Three quarters of your body is water. That's why you need to drink water, everybody. So Rebecca, are you gonna get? Her? Yeah, I want to take it to her. And then we have one other question. Okay, this is gonna be maybe for somebody who participated yesterday but didn't get a chance to win. Name one form of fitness that was offered yesterday. Zumba. Erica. 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 Yes, Zumba. Yes. So. Thank you guys so much. We do have some um, giveaways in the lobby. We have some fruit and we have some bags that we gave away and I got a little, a few of the flyers, but um, this will be happening. This is our first annual Jules Health Fair, first annual. So make sure that you mark your calendars next year. We're, trying, we're estimated for the third Saturday of April. Um, and we, I just wanna thank everybody who came out. We had a blast, Sister Judy. You're so young. Sister Judy, man, she wore me out. I'm just going to say that. Her and who else was that? Oh, all my dancing ladies. Oh, my gosh. They were there all day. But you guys, thank you so much for those of you who attended. And we hope to see you next year. And thank you to our leadership for giving us this opportunity. Next time, she's going to have to wipe her own microphone because my arm's getting tired. <laughs> well, you're building muscle. You're building muscle. So thanks to all who came out for to participate in the health fair. Looking forward to next year. Any other announcements? All hearts and minds are clear. We will see you next Sunday. Have a good week. God bless. You are dismissed.
the sound was horrible. Yeah.